All right. Okay, good morning. It's your favorite late bitch. Um, <laughs> who is still half putting her makeup on. Oh my God. So at the last second today before this call, I'm like, you know what would be great? If I can try and figure out how to go live on Instagram and Facebook at the same time. Um, and that I decided that that was something I was going to try and do with about 40 seconds until this call was scheduled to begin. Hi, Tanya. Um, so that was fun. And the last 40 seconds before I was meant to be going live, instead of like calming and centering myself like a normal person would be, I'm running all over my house trying to desperately find a second tripod <laughs> for my phone to set it up. So I've got it on Instagram and now I've got it on Facebook as well. And because I was running around like a mad woman, I overflowed my milk frother and forgot to put lipstick on. So we're doing that now. Um, but anyone who's worked with me before knows I'm chaotic, but I'm magic. So you will learn a lot today, even if I'm still coming to this live while finishing off my makeup, it will be magic and you will learn so much. So, all right. Now I'm looking half human. It has been a very early start for me. 2.30 this morning, I was up on a call with um, one of my mentors in, I think she's in Canada. Um, so it has been a, it has been a, a night, a day, a morning. So the bags, the bags are for real, but no problem. What I'm going to teach you has nothing to do with my eye bags. Um, but I'm just, if I sound like husky and so half asleep, it's because I kind of am. Anyway, <laughs> I am so excited to be here. Um, and running this challenge. If you guys have been following me for a while, you know that while I give out so much free content, my schedule is actually super limited because I also run a graphic design company. I've also got three kids, all the things. So when I do get a chance to come on and do these live streams and run these kind of fun masterclasses, it's really, really important to me. And I get really, really excited about doing it. So I'm really stoked. I've been waiting for this for weeks now. I've got all my notes, got all the things I want to share with you guys. I've got journaling prompts. I've got affirmations for today. You're going to learn a lot. But first, before we get into all of that, and while I want to share a little, a little, a little bit of my sto story, my journey, I would love to hear about you. Hi, where are you calling in from? What's going on with you? Where are you feeling blocked with money? Because even though I've got kind of a framework of what I want to teach you over the next five days, I also want to teach you the shit that's going to make a difference. So if you have a particular block, if you have something you really want to touch on and really want to make sure that I cover, please let me know. So I'm going to share a little bit about my story while you guys share a little bit about yours in the comments. And the reason why I want to do a quick snapshot of my story is because there is nothing more frustrating to me that when you join a webinar or you register for a masterclass or something like that, and it's um like an hour masterclass and you get 40 minutes of story, of backstory, you get two slides that might be fucking helpful. And then you get the remaining 20 minutes of like promoting what they're selling. We're not doing that here. That is not the vibe. I am an ambitious, busy bitch, and I don't have time for that shit. And I'm sure you don't either. I want to share a little bit about my story so you can understand where I've come from. And the fact that I was the brokest fucking bitch you'd ever meet with the biggest scarcity mindset and the most fucked up relationship with money, because it's important to what I'm going to teach you. But there is not going to be this like 45 minute story of mine two useful points and then I'm going to sell you shit. That is not happening. That is not the point of these five days together. I have so much that I want to teach you and I have such a short time to do it each day. So let's dive straight in. But for those of you who don't know me, who have never seen any of my work before, who don't know who the fuck this shown out bitch is and why the, the hell is she talking about money so much? It's because I have been battling with money my entire life. I was that kid that was super hyper aware of my parents' financial situation. I, you know, there was always a budget on our um, fridge on one of those yellow legal pads with, there was either on the fridge, there was either a budget for how much was getting spent or there was a calories. My, my parents were either always doing a diet and trying to lose weight or they had the budget up on the fridge. So I grew up kind of hyper aware of 
money. I've always been a hustler. I started my first business when I was seven, doing manicures for more of my aunties and my cousins. At family events, I'd take this little, like, silver, you remember the Silver's 90s makeup case boxes with all my nail polishes and, you know, the Body Shop Vanilla Musk little um, thing. Anyway, I was, I've always been obsessed with making money, with running businesses, always been super ambitious, always actually been really good at budgeting, but... But despite all of that, I still got to the point where I was standing in line at my local supermarket and I had a couple of things, like I needed some toilet paper, I needed some coffee and I needed like the little, the baby squeezy tubes for food. I'm standing at the checkout and my card gets declined. There's, you know, heaps of people behind me. My kids are looking me expectantly. They still want a kinder surprise. They don't understand why mummy's freaking out. There's a line of other shoppers behind me and my cards declined. I'm just like, I'm just going to try it one more time. <laughs> so funny. Um, and then like I start shaking and I start sweating. I'm trying to enter my pin because this was back before like the taps were really super common. And I start to sweat. I can feel myself getting really hot and just the, the shame crushing down. I'm, I'm sure everyone in that supermarket could kind of like hear my heart beating and how much I was freaking out. And I was just kind of the girl, like, I swear there was enough in here. <laughs> um, just just let me check. But there, there wasn't. There wasn't. In that moment, I'm standing in the supermarket. And I remember this so clearly because I was so hot and I was so sweaty. And then my, two, my daughter started to cry. And my son, who's autistic, he was getting frustrated. He just wanted the Kinder Surprise. I just wanted to get the toilet paper and get out of there because we were out of toilet paper. And when you're toilet training and you're out of toilet paper, that's not a great combination. And then because I was breastfeeding too, my my breast started leaking. I had my let down. I don't know if it was the stress induced. I don't know. So I'm standing in the supermarket line. My cards decline. I do not have enough money to buy toilet paper. I can't even move money from another account. Like it, it doesn't, there's nothing left. I cannot buy toilet paper for my family. My kids are crying. My breasts are leaking all through my gray top that I was wearing. So it was super obvious. And I just wanted to crawl in a hole and die. <laughs> So I just abandoned everything. I picked up the kids. I literally left the trolley there, the, the toilet paper. Like I had this full meltdown moment where I'm just like, I just need to get out of this situation. I don't know how to navigate this. This is so embarrassing. I just grabbed both the kids and like beelined it out to my car. And I sat in the undercover car park. I put the kids in the car. I didn't click them in, but I still sat in the car. Um, and I think I had like two leftover Mentoses floating around in my um, what do you call it in like the glove box and I gave that to the four-year-old to keep him busy and I just cried I just cried in my car park for like 40 minutes I just I hit I hit rock bottom when you can't buy toilet paper for your family I had hit rock bottom and I just cried there I just cried while I leaked and I cried and I leaked and I cried and then I breastfed her and then I leaked more and I cried more and I got to this point after I'm like choking in big sobs and big breaths and my four-year-old's got his hand like on my shoulder like it's okay mum even though he was non-verbal he didn't know how to communicate that he was okay and I just said no more like no more I'm not doing this again I am fucking done with this right I'm like drying my face I'm my sleeves and there's no snot everywhere and there's mascara everywhere i think i actually have a picture of it um which is hilarious i don't know what it is part of me in that moment when i needed to feel seen and validated in what i was experiencing there was no one around i ended up taking a photo of myself with this mascara like everywhere i don't know why but looking back i'm glad i have it i might be able to find that and share it with you guys but i got to this point where i'm like no more no more avoiding checking my letterbox in fear of bills no more paying just above the minimum on our credit cards because we were in a lot of credit card debt to feel like we were making some kind of progress, but it was really just screwing us over. I wanted no more pre-setting the fuel amount. You know how you go to fill up your car and you just want to be able to fill it, but yeah, I had to, I had to go there and put like $40 in and hope that that was enough to get me to the kids to school and back for the week. So I was like, no more. I'm not doing that again. That's not happening. No more saying no. When friends would ask me to go to lunch and they're like, let's go out here. And I would have to be like, oh, the kids are sick. But they weren't sick. I just didn't have money to go for lunch. No more nights of cooking like brown rice and chicken breasts or 95 cents pasta with some sauce and like trying to make it interesting night after night after night. 
was, I said no more to, to dreading getting a birthday invite for my kids' friends because I knew we couldn't afford a gift. No more to feeling guilty every time I got my hair done or got a coffee or even just bought a new pair of jeans to replace the ones I had since like five years of breastfeeding. There was no more dreading the day my kids got sick because I knew we couldn't afford the antibiotics. I was just sitting in this car, like listing all these things and I'm like, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not doing it anymore. I was like, no more, no more wondering if it was ever going to get better. Enough was enough. And looking back on that day, it is the, one of the clearest memories I hold. Everyone's always like, I remember my kids. I remember giving birth so clearly. I'm like, I don't remember shit about giving birth, but I remember this day so clearly because it was the moment that everything, my entire life trajectory changed and shifted because that was the most humiliating and embarrassing and shameful day of my life. But it was also the day that I made a decision to turn it all around. I decided I would never again be the mum that couldn't afford toilet paper for my family. And it has taken a lot of brutal honesty with myself and it's taken really difficult conversations with my husband. And it's taken some really confronting moments with a pile of bills that I was ignoring for a long time. But I had to open my mind up to learning a new way because I realized what I realized was all the decisions I'd made to create this life where I was forced to scrimp and save and count every cent and like raid my kids money box for bread and milk was it was all on me because I hadn't decided to learn a different way. So what I did is I started looking for answers. I had this moment where I'm like, all these other women in business are doing really amazing and their website's shittier than mine. And they don't teach what I teach as well. This is back before I was a money mindset coach, guys, clearly. But I was like, all these people are not as experienced or doing what I'm doing or doing it as well. And yet they're still making a lot more money than me. So I was like, maybe it's not in my Facebook ads. Maybe it's not some secret funnel. Maybe it's not all those things. Maybe it's actually something more to do with my the way I feel about money, my energy around money, right? So what I started doing is I read books, I took every course I could get my hands on, I started implementing money mindset techniques, and I even did the, the scariest thing, which was asking for help from people who are already living a financially abundant life. And I started to notice little changes. So my mindset shifted, the more my bank balance shifted. At first it was like a free coffee here or there, finding $50 note under the seat of my car, which would have been really helpful that I couldn't afford toilet paper, but I digress. Eventually, like little dollars and free coffees turn into thousands of dollars, turn into manifesting hundreds of thousands of dollars. And very soon I got to this place where I didn't need to check the bank balance before I tried to pay for groceries. I knew there would be enough. And soon I didn't need to pres preset the, the $40 limit when I put fuel in. I could just fill it up as much as I needed. Soon our credit card debt was completely gone. And eventually I stopped being scared of bills and got to this really healthy, enjoyable place with paying bills. So before that moment happened in the supermarket, I couldn't afford toilet paper. I, I had given up, right? Because so many people had told me that's just life. You pay bills and then you die. And they told me like, when you have kids, you just have to be okay with sacrificing a lot of time and sleep and money. But it's actually, it's wrong. That's not right. All right, so I dedicated the last five years to learning about this, implementing it in my own life, changing my own life. And then I started teaching other women about it it started coming up in my business coaching conversations and that led to more conversations and people are like this like you need to tell the world about this so i did i've been money mindset coaching now for over five years um so you know back when it wasn't a thing when there were books about money mindset i was out here trying to like tell the world about it and stand on my roof and scream it from the rooftop like it doesn't have to be this way it can be so much better um, and so that's my life today is pretty fucking amazing. And it wasn't because I got better at Facebook ads. In fact, I turned them off and it wasn't because I changed my branding to some specific pink. I actually have gone back to the most boring neutral colors you can find. And it wasn't because I invested $50,000 in some massive celebrity private coach. It was because I transformed my relationship with money and wealth. And that is what actually made all the difference. So now that you know a little bit more about me, let's dive into what I want to teach you today. Caitlin, I have money anxiety. I'm trying so hard to get rid of it. I'm starting to track my income now. I started halfway through last month and nearly met my target. That's awesome. That's fantastic, Caitlin. Money anxiety can be healed from like work on your nervous system. 
identifying where it comes from inside your body and then obviously doing this style of money mindset work um, as well today. Sorry, coffee time. Okay. So as a woman in business, understanding the power of your money mindset is absolutely crucial. Like let's not fluff around here. This is the part. This is the part that's missing. This is the part people aren't talking about or they're not talking about in enough depth for people to make actual progress towards. But it is your beliefs and your attitude towards money that greatly impacts your success and your financial stability. So this training that I want to do over the next five days and today is about exploring the importance of unpacking your earliest memories of money, creating a real clear vision for your financial future and affirming positive beliefs about money. Before we dive into those, like, what do I got here? One, two, three, four points, four points. And then I've got two um, activities for you to do homework. <laughs> um, I just want to mention as well that I'm doing giveaways every single day for this program, for this challenge. So if you want to share, you've got to share a screenshot or a, a video or um, some type of photo of you watching the training and tag sexy selfish in it and your name will go into the draw and we have something that we're giving away each day. So we've got books, we've got affirmation cards, we've got sage cleansing kits, we've got some really amazing um, giveaways each day and basically you're sharing for that 24 hours from this live into the next live. Every time something's shared and we're tagged in it, that is an entry into the draw, into the giveaway, which is going to be really, really fun. So yeah, sharing, I think the best way to do that is to share like a screenshot of you watching this or, you know, share a photo of the laptop, whatever you're doing, if you're watching the replay and just, yeah, make sure you get those entries in and tag us so that we can share this work with more women because that's what it comes down to. And it's really hard to do paid marketing for the work that I do because I mentioned money and my name is Sexy Selfish. So I go into the same category as OnlyFans and they won't let me paid advertise anything. So I have to rely completely on organic marketing, which is great because that's my favorite anyway. But that does require like asking and feeling comfortable asking you guys to share this work. If you get value out of this challenge, if you get value out of what we speak about today, please, please share it. You never know who you're going to impact from that. Okay. So Caitlin says, I love homework. <laughs> <laughs> you love my daughter loves homework too. She said as she ran out the door this morning when daddy's taking him to school, she's like, I've got three extra homework tasks to work on tonight, Mom. I'm so excited. I was like, okay, yep, sure. Anyway, okay, so unpacking your money mindset. Today we're gonna be diving into our earliest memories of money and how they influence our current money mindset. And we're also gonna be doing a powerful journaling exercise and an affirmation that I'm actually going to get you to close your eyes. I'm going to walk through with you and then you will get that on the replay emails and it's in the Facebook post as well if you want to go and look at it again. So I can't wait to see your insights and your breakthroughs and your takeaways from this program and what you learn and how it changes things. I'm just, that's the best bit ever to me is when I get those DMs like, oof, this thing you said changed everything. And I'm like, yes. Okay. So let's talk about understanding the power of your money mindset. So your money mindset is the way that you think and feel about money. And what it is, is it is influenced by your past experiences. So this is things like your family background, your cultural upbringing and more. So what it is that these experiences either create a positive or negative impact on your money mindset, right? So if you grew up with the like, rich people are evil and greedy and horrible and you know rich uncle joe is just an asshole he never helps us out with money when we ask for it and you're growing up trying to be a successful woman but deep down there's a little inner child in you that's going like but we can't because then we're bad like uncle joe and our mum and dad will hate us so you can see how it's like consciously we're like i'm gonna be a successful woman i'm gonna make six figures and this is gonna be amazing but subconsciously this little inner child in us is just like no we can't money is not safe money is not good, right? Likewise, if you had parents like mine, my, my mom was amazing at budgets. She's taught me so much over the years that I'm so grateful for. She was like fucking incredible with budgeting. 
Um, but I had this unhealthy relationship with it because I made things like budgets and things like calories and all these like rules and restrictions the benchmark of whether I was a good human or not. So I had this really toxic relationship with budgeting that was it didn't just because I was really good at a budget doesn't mean like it was a good thing for me. Do you know what I mean? So I want you to think back to your earliest memories of money as I speak on this. And if you feel comfortable sharing in the chat, if you feel comfortable, that would be amazing because you never know who else is going to resonate and need to hear your journey to kickstart something in them. So if you had a ne negative experience with money in the past, such as growing up in a family where money was always tight or feeling like you can never get ahead financially, these beliefs actually become like a blueprint. They become like a default setting inside right you know like if you <laughs> you've got your computer and you like set all your folders up nicely and then it restarts because of some update and it doesn't necessarily all go back to the way that you had it that's kind of what i see like the default setting of your subconscious like you can be doing affirmations you can be doing the energy work you can be saying i'm a millionaire money making badass but at the end of the day if your inner child still feels unsafe with money still feels like money will make her a bad person still feels like um, you know, money is for people who are a lot smarter and work a lot harder than she could possibly ever. All that shows up in self-sabotaging behavior, right? So those beliefs can hold you back. Whereas if you've got other positive experiences, which I'm gathering, usually the women in my sphere that are attracted and, and tapping into my world because of money mindset work, it's not the case of like, oh my God, I had a super positive relationship with money growing up. My parents taught me how to manage it. And we had like a super positive, healthy, neutral relationship with money. And I don't feel um, crippled by money anxiety whatsoever. That's usually not the conversations that I'm having in this space. So I'm like, I want to touch on if you had a positive mindset with money, but it's often not what resonates. It's not super relevant. Um, I've got a couple of my high end business coaching clients who've had these experience, but that's often not the case, right? So on the, the off case that you had a positive experience growing up with parents who taught you the value of savings and investing and helped you develop a growth mindset towards money, then you've probably got a much healthier relationship today. Now, this is not to just sit down and just like blame our parents for everything. That's not the vibe because they were doing the very best that they could with the information that they had at the time. And you now as a parent is doing the very best you can for your kids with the information that you have the at the time. But this is the thing, if you can recognize cycles of toxic relationship with money in your family, from your grandparents, your parents, yourself, do we want to just continue to subconsciously pass that on to the next generation? Because this thing, you have a choice. Our parents, our grandparents, whatever, they were just doing what was normal, doing what was like experienced around them. Right now you're listening to this, you're watching this on the replay, whatever it is, you have a choice. And you get to choose whether you want to create something different moving forward for your family and your kids or whether you just want to keep repeating the same cycles and like either way is fine with me but it's up to you right and this is the thing when someone joins um abundance as fuck my money mindset course we have this big conversation at the start like up until this point you could kind of like plead ignorant with it you didn't know any better, so you couldn't make any better decision. Moving forward, you're going to know better. You're going to have all the tools and resources to do better. Like there will be no excuse moving forward apart from just, I don't want to do it. Right. So there's this radical responsibility, which is a really important part of it. So let's talk about your earliest memories of money. Now that we understand the power that your money mindset actually has, let's talk about your earliest memory of money. So does anyone want to share, put in the comments, your earliest memory of money my earliest memories of money came down to like earning pocket money for a barbie doll that i wanted to buy from kmart watching my parents argue about money or my mum spending money out shopping and then feeling really guilty about it and saying like don't tell dad how much we spent or now we've got a we like had a good day this is really amazing and now we've got to tighten it back in so unlocking your earliest memories of money your earliest memory of money can have a significant impact on your current relationship with money. So it's important to take time to actually reflect on this. Uh, Caitlin, my dad and mom separated due to DV and dad negatively gearing his income, six figure state government job with five investment properties, couldn't afford to pay child support. He retired in his forties and is currently in Europe. My mom was always stressed about bills. Oh, don't we all have a story about a man like that in our life growing up? Don't we all have a story about that? 
I have a, I have an uncle story that, that did pretty much the same thing, which is just like, what a flog. My earliest memory is my mum and dad selling their boats so I could go on school camp. Wow. That says so much about their love for you. So much about their love for you. But I'm guessing that that might have um, left some lingering feels of like sacrifice in your relationship with money. Um, yeah, that's that's very interesting. Thank you so much for sharing, Joy. And I would love to dive into deeper that with that with you. Oh my God, I'm trying to be so conscious of time today. Anyone who's done my courses before will know that I'm just like, it's six one hour trainings. And then by the end of the course, they're like, Sharna, that was six two hour trainings and three bonus calls. And I could, I'll just like, I have so much I want to teach people. I really struggle to like not share everything. So I'm going to, I'm going to be so good. I'm going to be so good. Uh, Joanne, guilt. Yes. Oh my God, so much guilt around money. But also I'm like, I get it from a parenting point of view. Like we just got the kids school camp home forms home this week and it's like triple than the previous years. And now we've got two kids at school instead of one. And I'm just like, man, man, like, oh my God. Okay, I'll make it work. I'm gonna make it work. But I'm just like, that's just, it's unexpected. And I'm just like, yeah. Anyway, love your parents for that. But I assume, yeah, that would hold a lot of, a lot of guilt there. Okay. Where was I talking? Okay. It's important to take time to reflect on these memories, even though it can like bring up stuff <laughs> you might not be ready to deal with, but those memories give you insight into your current beliefs and attitudes towards money. And this is the thing. Everyone thinks that like money mindset work is this super specific 26 step process where you've got to stand on a hill and, and chant a mantra and stick a rose court butt plug up your ass and like only drink Florida water for seven days or something. It's actually not that complicated. And I'm saying that having written two books on money mindset work, but it's actually like, if you break it down to the fundamental steps, it's not that complicated. And really it comes back to more than anything is just awareness. It's awareness. It's being aware enough when you get triggered around something with money to be like, Oh, where does that come from? And then like diving into that. Right. So for example, um, oh my God, what am I trying to say? <sighs> this is what happens. Oh my God. ADHD life right now. Like literally mid sentence and my brain's like, nope, we're done. We're done with that. Thank God I wrote some dot points to speak with you guys today. Okay. So if you grew up in a family where money was tight, let's just use the, the, the polar opposite of like options here. If you grew up where money was tight you can kind of develop a scarcity mindset as a way to like stay safe, to protect yourself, right? It's this, I always got to prepare for a rainy day, always got to have a lot in savings. I've had women come and do my money mindset work courses and they're just like, oh my God, like I can't, like the money guilt is unreal. And they've had over a hundred thousand dollars in savings, but she bought a $9 bra from Kmart and like had a full meltdown. I'm a piece of shit human. I'm so bad with money. And it's like, no, 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 babe. Okay. So like, let's just not pretend that the scarcity comes from just living paycheck to paycheck and never having any money. You can have a scarcity mindset while having a lot of money, right? I know very, very wealthy women turning in a lot of money in their businesses who still are like classic A scarcity mindset. So if you grew up where money was tight in your family, in your experience, you may have learned to like fear spending money, feel like there's never enough to go around. But this can also like catch 22 in this, like if you grew up in a super restricted space and you become an adult and you get your own money and you're like, I'm like your whole life becomes treat yourself and YOLO. And you're like, it's almost like when you binge diet, and you go on like a 10 day juice cleanse. And then the minute after the juice cleanse, you're just like, I'm getting a cheeseburger. It's like the same thing. So if you grew up super restricted, you can either stay in that restriction or you go the complete opposite. It's like people who grew up without alcoholic parents, there's a 50, 50 chance they'll either choose to become an alcoholic again, or they will choose to never touch a drop of alcohol. It's the same thing with money. You grow up restricted, you either stay in this restrictive energy and like you're never good enough and it's never enough money and it's like super toxic or you go into this like binge like restrict binge restrict binge restrict cycle the same way you do after like a crash diet where you feel so deprived that you've just got to go and like hashtag treat yourself 
right? I know I'm showing my millennial here saying hashtag in an actual sentence, but I don't give a fuck. So see being judged by Gen Z's for like a side part. Oh my God, just leave me alone. Let me wear my skinny jeans in peace. Okay. So alternatively, like if you grew up in a family where money was really abundant, <laughs> You probably have a developed an abundance mindset towards money, but it's also like you didn't have responsibility for the money. If you had no concept of like what it takes to grow and expand money, you can also end up like stuck in a self-sabotaging cycle when you grow up. So understanding your earliest memories of money and how they've influenced your current money mindset. This is where we go, which call awareness to the thought and the trigger that pops up, identify the negative belief and where it came from. And then giving yourself to shift and perspective, like shift the perspective on that. So if I get super triggered when some going back five years to when I began this work, I would get super, super panicked if I didn't have $20,000 in the savings. And I would do this. I was starting my business and I would say to my coach, I've just got no money. I've got no money. I can't afford in that website developer. I've just got nothing. I'm like completely broke. And then she found out once when I was on FaceTime with her or something and I was opening my bank and she's like, Shoni, you got seven grand in there. I'm like, yeah, I've got no money. And she's like, what the fuck? So even when I had money, it was never enough. I always felt like I will not survive. I need to have more than enough money. I need to have more than enough, but not from a place of abundance, from a place of scarcity, from a place of like, I'm not enough. I can't have enough. It will never be enough. And what that would do is that would self-sabotage my business because it was like every client that I'd get, I would be like, not enough, I need to get five more. Not enough, I need to get five more. End up burnt out, disappointed, never celebrating myself, never taking a second to actually look back at where my business has been and the incredible things I've achieved. So it's like, even though you can have money, you can have a scarcity mindset that can be self-sabotaging you in so many ways. And then even if you're really good at making money, your programming might still be held something around like people who have money are bad women who have money are super high maintenance and greedy and not good people so that even when you do receive money when you do book those clients when you do hit your target it's like oh my god okay well something's got like a big bills come or suddenly you decide to like fuck it treat yourself and buy a flat screen tv and you're left even broken than before the reason why 97 percent of people who win the lottery end up broken than before is because they don't have a mindset to be able to handle that level of wealth, to be able to handle that money, to be able to grow it, keep it, feel safe with it. So they self-sabotage by getting rid of all that money, right? <laughs> Sorry, and we're gonna be talking about this in depth over the next few days. But before we wind up today, this little training, I really want you to step into what is the vision? What do you actually want? Because it's all being like, um, and what I see a lot is women in business are like, I just want to help people. And then they get on a call with me, a private call, and then it's like, I want money. Like, I fucking love making money. I'm like, so if you can't even admit that you want money, that you want an abundant life, if you're still hiding behind, I want more time, more time with my kids. I just want to help people. I don't care about the money. It's like, how are you going to expect to receive financial abundance if you can't even fucking admit that you want financial abundance. Like, hello. So, creating a vision for your financial future involves setting specific financial goals and you wanna develop a plan to achieve them. By having a clear vision for your financial future, you can then make informed decisions about your money and staying on track towards achieving your goals. This has been a big step in my relationship is actually sitting down with my husband and setting both short-term and long-term financial goals, which I teach you how to do in abundant as fuck and being on the same page. So when he pops up and he gets bored with the current car that he's got, which happens about every six months, we've been together 15 years. It's a fucking pattern guys. He's, ADHD, whatever it is, he gets bored about every six months with a car, wants something new. And so now, now because we have long-term goals and short-term goals, I'm like, you can buy a car, whatever, but the boat you want is going to take longer to get. And he's just like, Ugh. okay, you're right. And I'm like, oh, cool. you know what I mean? So once you have a plan for where your money is going and that helps you with those things, it's like, it's not like you can't afford anything you fucking want. You can, but you can be honest with yourself about that's not a priority. My priority is this goal that I'm working towards, not 
like buying this particular bag that I saw on TikTok that will be trendy for five minutes and then you'll never wear again, right? So when you've got a clear vision for your financial future, then you can make informed decisions about your money and stay on track. But you need the vision first. You've got to reverse engineer it. There's no point being like, I want to save a hundred grand. And any good financial advisor will be like, why? And if you're just like, because I want a hundred grand, it's like, <laughs> Try again. <laughs> like you've got to figure out what is the vision for your life and then you reverse engineer it from there. So what do you want to achieve in the long term? Once you've identified your values, like what is actually important to you? Because find, like private schooling might be really, really important to you or homeschooling might be really important to you. You having a career that allows you to travel might be important to you or having really, really, really amazing kitchen for you to cook every day and might be a value for you. Like once you acknowledge your priorities and your values and realize they're different to your neighbors, they're different to your parents, they're different to your sister or brothers, they're different to your best friends, and you realize not everyone should have the same priorities and values, you can own what you do with your money because there is no set formula of like, if I've got a house and 2.9 kids and the, you know, the mum wagon and a golden retriever and 20 grand in the bank, I'll be happy because you won't. Because that's that's someone else's blueprint for what it should. That's like an, an, a not even an average or a normal. That's just a formula someone came up with somewhere along the time. But it's not for you, right? So when you create your own formula, when you acknowledge your own values, it's so much easier to set a budget. It's so much easier to set plans. And, you know, it, it's what's important to you because that should look different to every single person. This is the whole of week two in Abundant as Fuck is we spent a whole week on that budgeting. And a massive part of that is values and priorities and in my time teaching abundant as fuck which i taught the first round in 2018 i've been teaching this program every single year since 2018 and it helps so many women around the world but i've never seen a budget from any of the women who have participated in this course be the same no two budgets we've created in abundant as fuck has ever look the same and they shouldn't ever look the same so if you're currently like beating yourself up because some stock standard budget that you learnt from a book or downloaded off someone's free lead magnet isn't working it's because it's not designed to work for you right so once you've identified your financial goals then you reverse engineer that plan to achieve it and then so this can look like creating a budget it can look like investing in your business or finding ways to increase your income or actually like cutting things out of your life that you realize that you're paying for and you have in your life that aren't actually aligned with you and where you want to go and what you want to do. There's nothing more freeing than doing a declutter, a social media declutter, a detox, a social like a, a decluttering of your life. Just like clear the shit out that's no longer relevant for you. It's so freeing and it always makes you more abundant. Anyway, having a clear vision for your financial future you make informed decisions about your money and you stay on track to achieving your goals. So I really want you to ask yourself, do I know where I want to go? Do I have clear financial goals? Because if you don't and you're just like, I want to make more money, that's like vague as fuck. And <laughs> that's that's not exciting for anyone, right? Caitlin, abundant as fuck link on the five-day challenges linking to the overflow method. Thank you for letting me know. I will get that fixed up when I hop off of this call. All right. So the journal prompt for today is I want you to ask yourself, what are my earliest memories of money? I'm just going to copy and paste this into the Facebook group. Um, and the, that type of stuff, um, Instagram, sorry, I haven't figured out how to copy and paste that into while I've got it set up on my phone. So you can check out the replay. Um, if you register for the masterclass, you'll get all the replays and you'll get all this on email. The link is in my bio if you want to register for that and have that. So the journal prompt, what are my earliest memories of money? How have these experiences influenced my current money mindset? So I want you to take time to reflect on your earliest memories of money. You can journal on this. You can just have a think about it. You can meditate on it, whatever works for you. And just ask yourself, how have these shaped my current money mindset? You can write down your thoughts in a journal if you want to. You can post them in a Facebook group. You can send me a fucking DM on Instagram. I love a good Instagram DM. And by reflecting on your past experiences, you then you gain insight into the limiting beliefs you have. And then we can begin the work to shift them towards a more positive perspective. Yeah. Okay. 
affirmation for today. So affirmations are powerful tools that help shift your money mindset to a more positive perspective. And basically this affirmation that I'm going to share for you, which is like specifically written for this program, because you guys know I have abundance texts that go out every single day. I have a full abundance affirmation journal. So like affirmations in my day, that's my life. It's constantly happening for me. And it's one of the keys to my success. But I sat down and created specific journal prompts for this program and specific affirmations for each day of this topic. Right. So. Repeating this affirmation will help you start to shift your beliefs about money and cultivate a more positive and abundant mindset. And what I would do with this affirmation is for today, I would make it your screensaver on your phone and I would put it on a post-it note up on your bathroom mirror or write it on your bathroom mirror mirror for the whole day. I want you to just keep like absorbing this like a little sponge. So the affirmation of today, hand on heart, close your eyes and let this sink in and like really get ready to absorb this because it will shift everything. Money flows to me easily and abundantly. I am worthy of financial success and prosperity. (laughs) I'm stimming. I love it. I love it. So I'm going to copy and paste that into here as well um, because affirmations are everything to me it is how we rewire those subconscious beliefs by choosing more positive beliefs it is that like ling- linguistic shifts and the, that that change in our words because our words like dumbledore said yes yeah, harry potter nerd over here like your words are your spells your words are the magic what you say changes what you believe we work on the subconscious stuff on your beliefs that makes what you say even more powerful so This affirmation will shift everything if you let it, right? Okay, so in conclusion, let's wrap everything up with a bow. Um, And then I'm going to let you all get back to your morning because we've got more time together tomorrow morning, which is going to be fun. So in conclusion, understanding the power of your money mindset, unpacking your earliest memories of money and creating a vision for your financial future are all essential steps towards achieving financial success and stability as a woman in business by taking the time to reflect on your beliefs and attitudes towards money and then using these like journal prompts and this affirmation with the positive beliefs you can develop a more positive and empowering money mindset and once you do that everything changes everything changes from not being able to afford toilet paper to running two very successful companies retiring my husband, having this incredible life where I get to like let my kids choose what activities they want to do and invest in extra clinics and trainings and let them be really intuitively led on and how they want to spend their time and what they want to do is so, so important to me. And for me, it's not about the, ha- like I have Prada, ha- I've got Prada handbag right here. Like I have them, I have them, but this isn't what it's about for me. It's not what it's about. It's about being truly abundant, being able to take the day off and go to the movies with my husband, being able to pay other women. That is what makes me so excited. Paying my subcontractors, paying my team, paying them well. That is the best feeling ever. Putting more money into the hands of women, doing this work and knowing that if I won the lottery tomorrow, I would still get up and do this work and share this with the world. True abundance will look different for every single person, but it starts with admitting you want it. So if you take anything from today, admit you want it. That's me. That's today. And I kept it under an hour. So I'm (laughs) so proud of myself because um, as anyone who's done my programs would know is that is very rare. That is very rare that we're here for just an hour. So I've had so much fun. Don't forget to share this. If you feel called, if you've got something from today, if it's resonated with you, if you just had fun, please share this challenge, this masterclass, this mini mind, whatever the fuck it is. I don't know. Like some of my copy came back with challenge. Some of it came back with mastermind. I'm just like, you know what? It is what it is. And the magic will land regardless of what the name is called. But we're going to be doing these little trainings in a little, it's an hour. You want an hour of my time, which is usually worth nearly $700. So enjoy, make the most of this. 
um, <laughs> an hour, half an hour to an hour, every single day over the next five days. Got giveaways, go into the draw every 24 hours. If you share, you've been watching this program, share a screenshot, shot, say something, I'm giving away signed copies of all my books, all my content, all my stuff, um, as well as some extra bonuses. So there'll be a giveaway every day. So yeah, let's have fun. I'm really excited to see what you get out of the next couple of days. Um, and just, yeah, please send me a DM on Instagram if you have any questions. Um, and then, yeah, if you want to know anything more about the challenges, my books, anything like that, just reach out. I love a good DM. Love a, love a DM conversation. Um, uh, but that's me. I will see you guys tomorrow. Have an amazing day. Um, bye. Oh my God. How do I end on the Instagram? <laughs> how do I end it? Okay. Is it just that? <laughs>